Hello and welcome to another episode of Cadence Fishing TV. I'm Steve Whitfield, I'm at Ully Reservoir on the outskirts of Sheffield and I'm going to give you some advice and some tips on fishing the slider. I fish a lot of float only matches and on venues like Ully Reservoir where the depths are in excess of 30 feet there isn't really an alternative to fishing a float. The method in itself is quite simple. The float itself runs up the line off your bulk and it rests on a stop knot. It all looks quite simple but there's a bit more to it and I'm going to show you exactly how it's done. As with any job you need the right tools and today I'm using the Cadence CR10 15 foot number one. The reason I'm using a 15 foot rod is I'm fishing at quite a distance and when I strike I need to pick that line up. The rod itself it's got a fast progressive action. The advantage of having a fast progressive rod is when you get a bite it, it picks the line up quick and it also has great fish playing action. The second rod I'm, uh, I've got set up today again it's a cadence and it's a 15 foot but this time it's the number two. The reason I've got the number two it's got a slightly heavier tipping and it's also got a higher casting capacity this float I've got on this setup is 10 gram. The float I've got on the number one is actually a six gram. So there are the rods what I use for my slider fishing. Let's have a look at the reels and have a look at the line. The reels I'm using today for my slider fishing are the 4000 size. They're both cadence, this is the CS7 and that's the CS10. If you see there, I've got the line right up to the spool. This is quite important for when we're casting long distances you don't want no restriction from your spool the line on the reel is 014 but I've got that incorporated with an 021 shock leader what I do for all my slider fishing I put this 021 shock leader on this takes all the riggers and the casting but it also prevents tangles a common problem people have with sliders and I see this regular is people having tangles and that's because they're fishing too light a line. O21 in itself is quite thick. Eliminating tangles, making it quite easy. It really is important to use a shock leader. If you've ever read a textbook on slider fishing, it usually involves using some of these. Now these are swan shots. These are what most people would use for the bulk. I do it differently. I use I use a carbon stem and an olivette. Quite simple but gives you a massive advantage over, the, over the, the swan shots. If you look at this rig, it actually holds the line away from the float. Quite difficult in the wind, but you can see, see, see how it works. A problem what a lot of people get when they're slider fishing is that on the cast, especially when you're casting at distance, the hook length can actually wrap around the float, tangling up. And, the, and, the, let, and the, the bulk won't settle. What I've done here, this eliminates it completely. And I've had hundreds and hundreds of casts with this method and I've not been in a tangle yet. Another very important part of the setup is this number eight swivel. This is where I attach the shock leader to the hook length. It does two things. One, it acts as my last dropper and it also helps eliminate tangles and spin-ups on the hook length. We talked earlier about the float sliding up the line to a stop knot. It's ever such a simple knot but people still seem to have problems doing this. I'm going to show you, it's quite easy. What you do is you take a piece of line, generally similar diameter to what you've got, they always knot better to the same diameter. That's an 021, this is an 020 simply because it was in the box. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. So what you do, you take a piece of line about 12 inches long, you lay it against your line which is on your main line and you form a loop. If you can see that there, I've just formed a loop and it's a simple task of passing the line through the loop. If you see there, it's passed through once, twice, three times, four times. Yeah, and if you draw that together, as with all knots, just give it a little bit of a moisten, you pull that together and there you have the slider knot. 
Now what you do with that is, I always trim that, the, the one that's leading onto the float, I leave it quite sharp, probably about five to 10 millimeters. The second one to me isn't as important, but what you need to do now and again is just tidy that knot up and tighten it up. So therefore that longer tag there just gives you, because it has, they do have a tendency to loosen off. But that's, the, that's where the float's gonna sit up to. And that's your slider knot. So let's have a closer look at a slider float. The slider float I've been using today are partly loaded. This is important because when you cast out, you want the float to stay with the bulk. Another great part of these floats, these DJK sliders, is they've got interchangeable weights as well. Now these little weights, what you add to the uh, add to the float, makes them very versatile. And when I fish an Olivet, I can actually do the fine tuning on the float using these little discs. The float itself is very good too because it's got an insert in the top so you can see the shy bites as well. Another great tip is these are interchangeable. So I can also set the float to the light conditions. And if the light conditions change, which they often do on big reservoirs where you get the sun and the wind, it's just a quick job to wind in and change the tip. Feeding when slider fishing can be quite difficult, mainly because of the distances involved. I, I use ground bait. I'm using a ground bait where you can put one squeeze together and it holds together firm. This is inherently messy. So one of the ways I've done, one of the things I've done to overcome this is by using one of these Nash ball makers. Quite simple, take a scoop of ground bait, pop the cap on, pop it out, and there you have it. A nice round ball for catapulting. The ground bait I'm using today is special bend from, from bag and match baits. It's quite a simple mix. It's one of my own mixes what I've done. Brown crumb, white crumb, biscuit, bits of crushed hemp in there. Very simple mix, but the important thing is it contains some white crumb. Now that makes that quite firm. If there were no white crumb in that, it'd be falling, be falling apart by now. Another top tip for adding particles or loose feed to the ground bait is when you do, before you form your ball, pop your finger in the middle, take a few casters, maggots, or pinkies, whatever you'd like to feed, and just cap it off. And what you end up when you've done this, end up with a nice little ball of ground bait with a few particles in the middle. Perfect. To feed the swim, we simply take a ball of ground bait and aim at the float. As you can see there, I've got the line marked up. That's at 35 metres. I've done this with both rods on the bank. I've used the measuring sticks for this, like they do on a feeder. But this ensures that I get to the same spot each time. And basically, when I cast the float out, I'll wind it back until I get that onto my reel. It's quite apparent because of the difference in colour. And then I'll actually stop and I'll feed the line out as it goes back through the float. One of the main differences with fishing a slider is the way the float settles. On a standard waggler, the float would settle quite quick and cock up and then your droppers would come in. But if we're fishing, actually, we're actually fishing 28 foot deep. What happens is the float hits the water surface and the line will pass through the float. I'm going to demonstrate this for you now. Right, I've made the cast and what I'm now going to do, I'm going to wind back until I see my line marker hit the reel, which it has there. And what I'll do now, I'll stop at that point and I'll pay some line back out to the float. You'll see the float popping up now out of the water as the line's actually going through the float. When the bulk gets down to the depth, the float will actually pull over and settle. And it's from that point, you're actually waiting for a bite. 
There we go. Now we're fishing. Well, that's slider fishing in a nutshell. I hope you've learned a few things from my tips and advice. It's a fantastic method. Get out there, give it a try, and thanks for watching.